Hi, my name is Yvon de Bats. I'm head brewer and co-founder at Brasserie de la Seine here in Brussels. We started our brewery with my business partner Bernard at the end of 2003. We were at the time not in Brussels, but in the suburbs in a small village called, called St. Peter's Slip. Hence we called the brewery St. Peter's Brewery. But uh, we had to move from there at the end of 2005 because the location was not really suitable for long, long term. Uh, it was very small and so we decided to install a brewery in our city, Brussels. It was our dream since day first, but we couldn't find any uh, decent place at the time. Um, it took us a few years to find it, actually five years, and so we found the, the right spot uh, in 2009. And so 2010 has been building works and we could finally perform our very first uh, brew 100% made in Brussels on December 22nd, 2010. So that gave birth to our anniversary beer, the Brussels Calling, which we brew back every year on December 22nd as a remembrance of that uh, special day for, for us. And uh, yeah, the new version has just been launched today, actually. You've also gone totally orga or organic. Uh, mm -hmm. What uh, sparked that or, and mm -hmm. how did that come about? Yeah, it's, um, it's not a, a recent story. The, um, we, we wanted to do that since years. Personally, I eat organic since more than 20 years. Um, most of the guys in the team do the same. It's something quite natural for us. And so we, we wanted to, to do it since years and years. But um, I know that it's not easy, not as easy as it sounds at least, because the, the problem is to get raw materials that will be of constant quality. And uh, I, I work very closely with um, producers of raw materials and um, among them our molster, uh, Carl Dingemans. And it's years and years that I'm asking him, can you provide me with, with, with constant organic malt? And he said, well, I can find good malt time to time, but I cannot guarantee that you will have the, the quantity you need all year round. And uh, actually, beginning of last year, he called me and told me, well, Yvon, now I found a good supplier and, I, and, I, and I'm 100% confident in what he will um, give us year after year. And so we could start um, making experiments a year ago. Uh, we, we really took the time that was needed because you have to adjust uh, the recipes, the, the methods of brewing, because um, of course it's still barley, the, the, the base, and it's still mainly um, starch and, and proteins, but the, the, the proportions are not exactly the same. The, the way to brew to get the exact extraction of what you need in your wort is a little bit different. So it needed um, different adjustments and I didn't want to rush, certainly not. And I wanted to be sure to find like the quality, the taste and the constancy of our beers. And so after one year of trials, trials and errors, uh, we were happy finally. So we got the certification last December and we launched the first uh, beers with um, the organic logo on the label um, last week actually. So it's a, it's a new thing for us and we are extremely happy with it. It's, um, it's to put in a more general context. We built a brand new brewery here on the side of Tour Taxi and we have to, uh, tried to, to make it as, as sustainable, uh, as environmentally friendly possible. So our roof, for instance, is covered with photovoltaic panels. When the weather allows, we are totally independent for our electricity. But even more, we can give back some of it in the, in the network. Uh, we have different systems to recuperate heat uh, from the machines. Uh, we can recuperate rainwater as well for, for, for instance, brushing the toilets, etc. Et so we, we really did our best on, 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 on that movement towards uh, more sen sustainability and yeah becoming organic is just part of it. Uh, it it just makes sense you've come a long long way from mm. when you first started mm. and mm. you've inspired a whole new brewer how does it feel to be kind of the inspiration mm. for so many other brewers mm. and now you have a little collective around here with mm. uh, and stormlings, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, no science, science and uh, uh, la, 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 la source is la there source, also. Yeah. No, it's a, it's it's a very nice feeling actually. We we always say, as as a joke, but it's it's true that when we opened our new brewery in Brussels, we doubled the number of Brussels breweries because there was only one left, Cantillon, and the the previous guy who did that did that probably a thousand years ago. <laughs> you know, Brussels was founded r roughly in 1050 historians 
don't always agree, but it's basically that. And, and very soon there was a first Brussels brewery. And very soon after there was a second one. But since that, nobody could double the number of, of Brussels breweries. We could do that. And, and it's, it's funny to, to, to realize that. And of course, since, since that, we have paved the way for, for others to come. And it's, it's just normal. And it's a very nice thing to, to see. If, if we talk about authentic breweries, of course, uh, we are always happy. You're a, a historian somewhat of beer. And hmm. where do you see the Belgian beer scene going? Hmm, that's a vast question, um, and uh, yeah, it's not a question for historian, but for uh, someone with a, a, a bowl glass <laughs> to who could see the future. Um, there are many good things and, and bad things at the same time, as in every sector, I, I, I suppose. Good thing is that we see more and more authentic small craft breweries and it's always nice so there is a real enthusiasm especially among the the customers the, the drinkers um, you see more and more craft beer in the pubs and and it's absolutely fantastic the downside is that beer is now trendy finally in belgium imagine beer has become trendy in belgium um, because it's, it wasn't uh, no no more and and this is absolutely fantastic no doubt but um, it attracted some people who are obviously there mainly for making money who don't really care about uh, making the things together and so you see on the market on the shelves in the shops so many contracted beer made sold actually by what we call fig brewers and made by big uh, breweries in the shadow and big, big industrial breweries uh, mo mo most of the time and this is for me the, the drama of Belgian beer because this is badly damaging the, the Belgian beer culture. When, when, when you look at a shelf with beer nowadays, most of the time half of it are made in just two plants. Plenty of different names, plenty of different um, companies and, and it gives an impression to the people that we have so, so many varieties of beer in our country but actually they, they are coming from just two plants so there, 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 are, lit, there, there are a lot of manipulations and, and lies that are, um, that are brought to, to, to the customers to today and th this is really the downside of, um, of, of the picture now uh, it could be only positive but yeah I would lie if I would say it's only nice no there are too many uh, sharks on the um, on the market that are obviously there only to sell things uh, they don't make things with their hands they, they don't put their soul in their products in the products they sell and I think it's a real pity what's the solution to that hmm. for them to stop and sell computers apps or whatever <laughs> I, I, I don't know I don't know uh, or to become real brewers so they will finally see that it's it's a great job it's a great trade but it's very difficult and it's only a question of um, taking an order via computer it's a little bit more complex than, than, than that um, but yeah if that continues uh, you know we have an expression in French that says that um, you are you sit on a branch and you sow the branch on which you are sitting it's exactly what is happening because the market because of that mainly is now totally saturated there are too many brands of beer on the market and everyone will suffer from it so I, and it's happening in the US since six, seven years now. We, 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 we see it there um, all the time and, and, and it's coming to us. Uh, saturation is already there. And it's a pity because the fact that uh, the market is, is so crowded because of the fake burst is, is um, avoids somehow the, the, the real people, the authentic, authentic burst to, to come on the, on the market, why they would deserve it. So, so it's twice a pity, I think. I guess transparency on mm. the bottling and the label, which is what a lot of the consumers have been demanding and mm. a lot of, uh, consumers association. Mm. Maybe that should come to beer too. It's the it's the basics of the basics, of course. But the, there is no law in Belgium that that obliges the um, the, the so-called breweries to do that. So a lot of them do it nowadays, um, and it's uh, it's it's good to say. But uh, but there is no obligation and and. You know, it's al also always written in very small letters. On, on you, you, you can't, you can't see it. Or, or almost, and most of the people they don't go into details when they, they read the label. Everybody knows that. 
but on, on, on the label you will see Brussels for instance in big letters and so people will think it's oh it's a new local thing it's nice I want to support those people while well, it's made in the shadow in, in Flemish Limburg or, or um, East Flanders so somewhere okay if you want to to sell things I, I, I'm not saying that people have to do the business the way I want to, to do it but just don't pretend you are a brewer if you don't make the beer you sell. You are a beer merchant and you own some brands and this is fine, no problem. But don't lie to the people, this is my main message actually. How do you stay authentic? Hmm. Just doing what we have always been doing, uh, bring selfishly for ourselves the kind of beers we want to make, we want to drink. Um, I, I mean, it's a, it, it, it sounds like a slogan, but it's the truth. Uh, actually, we, we brew really the things that, that we, we like uh, and we use the methods that we, that, 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 that we like. You, you know, in, in beer, the methods are more important than the recipes. And, and we have been thinking for years and years very precisely to, to the way we want to make beer. And, and we, we, we have like a, a red line that we've followed since, since day one. Um, and of course, we, we adjust it and we try to become better. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we work with, with, with values and we always try to, to, to follow them. And what are those values? Integrity, authenticity, taking the time that is needed. For instance, in the, pr in the process, um, each time the yeast is involved, we never push the process. There are many technical ways that exist for making a beer quicker. Uh, but most of the time, you, you speed up uh, a part of the process. It's never good for the beer. It's good for your wallet, it's, it's very good for making more money, of course. For the beer, I, I, it's not. So we, 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 l we let, it's an image of course, but maybe it's not. Um, we let the yeast manage the things here. She will decide when it's time to, to, to go to the next step. Um, we, we never force the, 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 the things. What's your current capacity now? Um, I mean, I know it's difficult mm. saying we're in mm. the time of COVID, but what's your mm. maximum capacity? You have huge demand, your beers are hugely popular. What's your capacity and what percentage do you export mm. and what's the Belgian market? It's difficult to, to, to speak about volumes during COVID time, of course. We, we lost easily 30% because of COVID. We, we did before COVID um, 13, 1500 hectoliters uh, we can without adding any tank here go close to 17,000 roughly but just by adding a few tanks we can easily go to 20 25 30 thousand and, and more uh, it's just a matter of adding tanks and we have the room for that in, in the new building the thing is that we don't want to grow too big growing for growing has no meaning for for, for me um, I don't want more money or more anything. I want to pay my loans at the bank because we have to invest a lot for, for building this, this beautiful place here, of course. Um, I want my people to be paid well, but uh, besides that, uh, growing for growing would be meaningless for, for me. We want to grow a little bit bigger to be more comfortable and of course because we have been hit early by the, by the crisis. But uh, I want to stop growing at, at a certain moment, around the 25,000 hectoliters. I will n it's not a competition for me. Uh, we will never try to be the biggest brewery in Brussels. We don't care. Uh, we will just try to make a very high quality beer uh, and to still have total control on what we do. Uh, I think that at a certain moment, if you, if you become too big, uh, you, you, you lose some, some things. Um, as an example, I still brew minimum once a week ma ma myself. I don't want to abandon, abandon that. I don't want to just be a manager of a successful company because my passion is making beer, not, not being in numbers and, and things like that. And, and so I want to keep a human size. Um, of course, it always depends on the point of compar comparison. Uh, we already have a certain size and we will grow a little bit bigger, but not too big, certainly not, no. How do you keep that? philosophy going with all the pressures to grow and grow and the pressures on investment and all that. How do, how do you keep that balance? It's very tough. We, we drink beer <laughs> and uh, we try to don't take ourselves too seriously and, and, and don't listen too much to, uh, to people coming to us only with numbers. Uh, 
but we have no like a no recipe for for that we try to be ourselves uh, i don't know how to to answer to the to that question have you had offers for people trying to buy because we know oh yes of course of course yeah um, my telephone is burning <laughs> those those days of course yeah yeah well, of course but we we are not for for for, for sale no be because well if you would get millions from who who knows who uh, what would we do with those millions i i, I would buy new new kettles and, and still make beer for why i mean uh, no, I'm I'm happy like that. It's 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 really no, the, the, there is no point for us of, of of selling. We we didn't make this company for it to be sold and for us to get rich, uh, as a sure thing. Because we 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 like to be brewers. That's great to hear because mm. uh, we all know, mm. and I I know you maintain true to your philosophy and true mm. to that craft spirit mm. yeah, yeah. Of, of staying independent and not mm. just for independence because you really enjoy it. Mm. Uh, we know others who are there to brew and sell out, hopefully. Mm. Um, exactly, many. Mm. Yeah. And uh, mm. so where do you see, uh, going back to the bigger picture, where do you see the craft scene going? I mean, we now have supposedly 16. We have a new one coming on, new, who was spawn, you know, he brewed with you, and he was an employee here. But we now have 16 in Brussels. Did you ever imagine I think Six, 16 15. real breweries? No. That's <laughs> about 10 then, is it? I, sh I, sh I, should, I should count, but it's not 16. It's okay. probably half of that. Okay. If, if uh, Fig brewers are not yeah, worse yeah, for me. So, say, so uh, 16, yeah. no, that, that, that's, that doesn't seem possible okay. for me, but, but, but it, it's, it's a lot compared to a few years ago. Yeah. Again, it's, uh, it's great if people are genuine and authentic. Uh, no, we are very happy with our neighbors. We are very happy to have... Uh, People like um, Hermitage, we are very um, excited to see La Mule um, co co coming, people like that. It's, 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 it's great, yeah, for, for, for sure. Is there a craft style developing that's Belgian in thing, or are we you know, copying styles, or we, is, it, is it a melange? You mean the styles that are made in Brussels? Everything no, there, no there, there, there is everything in its country. Uh, wi which which is nice. It's a, it's, a, it's a little bit like Brussels. It's a melting pot. There is no style f from Brussels nowadays. There has been, of course, and it's lambic, and of course, we, with Cantillon, fantastic beer, fantastic people. But it's the only style that really belongs to to Brussels. All the other breweries uh, so far, and and it's a good thing, uh, are making different things. Actually, a lot of them are, are obviously totally. Um, USA inspired, uh, some are a little bit English inspired, um, La Mule will be uh, German inspired, um, we are German, English and Belgium inspired, so yeah there are many different things and, and, and it's good. Um, it's only if we can keep a diversity in the offer of beer in a city lo like Brussels that it will work. Um, but because if, if, if the people start co to copy each other, then it's, it's, it's finished. It's totally pointless also for the, for the drinkers, for the customers, of course. You have mm. uh, how many beers now, uh, types of beers? We have eight permanent beers, three seasonal, and then when situation allows, uh, we do a lot of collaborations, too. not a lot, but regularly. And so in a normal year, we will probably launch uh, 20 different beers, uh, I would say. It's also not um, a, a goal to have a new beer every week. Uh, first off, if you do that, I think that your beers are never good. Uh, it's not easy to, to launch a, a new beer, but of course it's exciting and, and we are very happy if we have about 10 collaborations uh, every year. It's always a very funny moment and we learn fr from each other. It's, it's always very cool. But of course, for that we have to be that virus first. But uh, we are eager to to be able to welcome our friends from from uh, foreign countries to to brew with us in this new place uh, as a sure thing. For everyone, for every brewer, especially the craft brewers, it's been a tense time during COVID. What has been your strategy, and how have you survived? It's true to say survived <laughs> because it's uh, we are really in survival pe period now. Uh, so, uh, at first, our philosophy has, has always been to support the pubs by selling mainly to them. So we have been extremely um, 
we, we've only been present very few in retail I mean um, we were selling 90% of our beers to bars and restaurants and we're extremely proud of that then we have been hit by the COVID meteorite there is no better image for, for, for us and of course we had to change a little bit and go a little bit more to retail uh, but of course we'll keep a, a very special uh, relationship with the bars and restaurants because it's the place we, we love is the place we I, I spend my life in bars <laughs> and, and restaurants basically since since before I'm a brewer I, I love that Bar bars are the soul of Belgium and especially the soul of Brussels we see now that without its bars Brussels is, is nothing it's a it's a city that has zero interest it's an addition of problems but when the bars are there it's one of the nicest city on, on earth um, I, I think so we can really touch now the importance of the bar the only ones that don't touch it and don't realize it is our politicians who do nothing to support the bar seriously I mean it, it's a real real shame but so we will never change with that relationship uh, close relationship with, with the bars but now yes we have been pushed of course to sell a little bit more to retail um, and it's fine but uh, but but the, the bars will always have our, our priority and our hearts will always be at the bars for, for sure during the first um, lockdown we, we quickly build um, a website uh, a shop a web shop um, I mean and uh, yeah it, it helped us a lot not at all su sufficient of course but uh, it helped the physical shop helped also going a little bit more uh, to retail uh, as well but uh, as every br real brewery we really need the, the pubs and restaurants to, to, to reopen uh, of course uh, the, the real business model of, of a brewery relies there okay you can do some percentage elsewhere but or yeah our, our business is totally bar oriented of course uh, what uh, I guess you mentioned the government have they been helping out in your employees have you managed how many employees uh, do you have uh, we are um, 20 people we, we kept everyone of course uh, firing someone because of that would would have kill us um, but I don't know everyone is there and the, the only help we, we we got but it's from the federal government uh, it's the um, temporary unemployment system Th this is this is a great help um, o o of course but um, but we we need help towards bars and restaurants because if they are not helped we will suffer as much as as, as them because when they reopen they will need uh, uh, things to, to sell. They will need beer, they will need coffee, they will need water to sell to their customers. But they have no money no more. They, they, they've, they've used all the money they, they had just to survive. And so how will they, uh, how will they be able to, to, to pay for, um, for, for those goods? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's because of that that the regional government has to help them. W with uh, credit lines, for instance, w w without interest, uh, and and I, I'm, I'm speaking very often to ministers and I always tell them if you give one euro to the bars and, and restaurants now the, the, um, it, it's like an investment consider yourself being investors that euro will be multiplied by 10 because the, the whole system will continue to, to live but if you don't do that the whole system will just collapse and, and then you will lose an amount of money you have no idea of it will be like a disaster a, a tsunami of bankrupt um, of uh, human dramas but still I have not seen a light in their eyes telling me oh yeah you are right we will do something no they, they, they wait they just wait and they always claim you know the problem with Belgium you, you know that is that we have so many layers of, of, um, of power and so many governments and it's always the fault of the other government oh no we cannot do this because we asked uh, the other guys to do something but it's, uh, it's, it's not a way to manage a country I mean and it's and it's um, it's 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 a proof of coldness also, so nobody is responsible. Uh, I, I I disagree with that. What was interesting also was the solidarity among the uh, the, the craft brewers supporting each other, and there was a lot of that. Were you, was that a sign of optimism? We we always try to to help if we can. Of course, uh, we we give time to time technical uh, advices, uh, and we do that with with pleasure. No 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 problem, but. Um, there, there has been a little bit of, of that, of course, and, it, and it's, it's very nice, but uh, it will not be sufficient. We, we need a massive help from the authorities. 
Um, it's uh, of, of course we are entrepreneurs, so we fight uh, and, and, and we fight together also, but it will not be sufficient to save the system because we're talking about the whole system yeah. and we are too small for, for supporting all that weight uh, only ourselves, I mean. And I guess the yeah. danger is that what we're seeing now is some of the bigger brewers who own bars starting to buy out some of those bars. So yeah, it exactly. become like the UK system mm. where it's tight it's bars. It is that a danger that you see? It's a huge danger. It's a huge danger. We know that they are looking after places to, to, to buy already. And so their monopoly or shared monopoly uh, will be even more powerful and it will be way more difficult for us to enter bars in the future as, as, as a sure thing, yeah, definitely. You know, mm. my attraction when I switched to beer and looking at beer and the wine reporting was I mm. felt more comfortable with the, the people around it and the type mm. of people who drank beer mm. and the places we went to drink beer. It was so much more democratic. Mm. Yet I feel there's a certain way that craft and beer is going that's becoming mm. a bit like that wine culture that mm. I kind of got turned off mm. with. Mm. But what's your thoughts on mm. that? I agree with you, it's a, it's a big danger. There are two, two things to, to, to be said, I think. Um, first, first, it's a good thing because finally um, we put beer at the same level of complexity than wine. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's normal. It's, it's chemically it's a beverage that is as complex as wine no 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 doubt it can generate the same amount of pleasure also there is no reason that one would be better than the other so that that's the good part finally um, beer is a good and noble beverage but for me the essence of beer is to remain accessible and and popular in the noble um, sense of the of, of the term it's it's something that is extremely important and 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 indeed i would be extremely sad to see that now posh people or hipsters take the beer culture for themselves um, because it has to be shared among um, many different kind of, of people and i i've personally to to i'm proud of two things uh, that we we have done uh, first off we clearly make beers for brewers our tawas buba for instance which is my favorite beer that that, that that we make is a real beer for the brewers all my friends in in america having a brewery uh, it's their fa favorite beer just because it's the definition of beer something that is simple just quenching it has character it has taste it is it has flavor but you can just drink it and, and forget ab ab about it, don't focus too much about it, um, just because it's, uh, it's nice, it does good things to your body and you can still focus on, on being with your friends and sharing things wi with your friends. My second um, pride is that we are now present in many uh, simple, uh, classic, unpretentious pubs actually cafes and now Zina beer is in many of them and I see it being drunk by people who are not beer experts just just the, the common drinker they, they have no expertise they drink just beer for pleasure again for sharing things with, with their friends and and I'm extremely extremely proud that we we, we left the, 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 the specialist beer cafes we are still there and, and it's very nice of course but we are also in the common cafes and and this is a fantastic move um, that happened um, with our beers five or six years ago and I'm super super happy with it. What about mm. prices? I mean one of the things we've seen with this interest in craft mm. beers mm. is the rise in prices. Does that make it less accessible for people or how do you... But, but you know making, making the best beer of the world or the worst beer of the world costs basically the same price. So it's not like for wine, even the price in wine, <laughs> there is a lot to say probably about it, but I'm not an expert. But in beer, there is no reason for having crazy high prices for beer. It doesn't make sense. And since day one, we have decided to have what is probably a stupid politic of price, maintaining our price is low. The reason when we started is, is and I'm talking really sincerely, is that um, at the time, all our friends, they were unemployed artists. And we said to ourselves, okay, if our friends, our own friends cannot afford to buy our beers, then we make a big mistake. And so this is why we always kept our, our prices quite low and it's still the case today. But it's very important, it's part of our philosophy. Uh, a, a, a good beer 
has to be accessible. It's, it's very, very important. I think a brewer has to do two duties. First, making his yeast happy, that's the most important one, and then making his beer ac accessible. Uh, of, of, of course, it, it's, it's, it's normal. It has to be and to remain a popular beverage, definitely. Okay, where are you right now in terms of your headspace and where this is going? I'm a pessimistic, optimistic, is that a good <laughs> answer? Um, so I, I see the reality and so I cannot be fully optimistic because it would mean I'm mad. Um, I, I have hope, of course, otherwise I would not be here sitting talking um, wi wi with you. But uh, we, we really need the authorities to wake up, oh, uh, honestly. That, that's if I have one message is that wake up.